Holy moly, we are at 6.5k subs. Isn't that crazy? That was only 130 times how many I had when I made this trash video. Hello everybody, I'm Farrar and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be talking about what all you guys are thinking now that it's summer. AMC 10, AMC 12, and Amy. Dude, imagine back when I had 50 subscribers, what the heck? Okay, but seriously though, you guys are amazing. Thank you guys so much for all the support you guys have shown me. 6.5k, that is crazy. You guys are all amazing. Thank you for supporting the videos. Keep doing so, I appreciate it. And because of all the support, I wanted to make a video that a lot of you guys have been requesting, and it turns out to be that very same video. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> Bruh. After all, the camera quality is better, the editing is better, the enunciation is <laughs> debatably better, but the hair is definitely not better, that is for sure. Bruh, what the heck? I do not know what happened to the hair. It was, it was looking kind of okay back then, but now it's just gone. I, I don't know what to say. Hello everybody, I'm Karar, and today we are going to be talking about how I would suggest you go about improving your competitive math skill, specifically if you want to get to Amy or Jema. The advice in this video is basically a sum of all the stuff that I've learned basically from trying stuff out and failing or trying stuff out and succeeding and from just here talking to my friends and that kind of thing. A lot of the content is obviously going to be the same as the previous video, but I will try to make it more entertaining and I will try to add some more analysis than like some other new stuff that I learned. So hopefully it'll be good. Okay. Now, just real quick, remember that if you enjoy the content, please remember to like and subscribe. It really helps me out a ton. I basically live off your guys' support, dude. If you guys don't support me, I might cry. Come on, you gotta have three seconds to hit the like button, otherwise I'm gonna start crying, okay? What? You did it? Let's go! I appreciate you, okay? Thank you. Also remember to join the Discord, we have a lot of resources there if you guys wanna like learn how to get better at stuff. That's a very good place to do it, and if you're interested in making your own Olympiad YouTube channel, please look at Karara Course, we're down in the description. But enough plugging stuff, let's get into the actual video, okay? Alright, so step one to making Amy and JMO is, as it was in the other video, take a diagnostic test, okay? To search up past AMC 10 on Google, pick the first link that's probably from AOPS, take one of the newer ones, and then just see how many you can solve. Don't worry about timing it, all you want to do is see how many you can solve. It might feel really hard, it might feel impossible, you might even get a fat bagel, but it doesn't matter. All this is is to see where you're at and what you gotta do to improve. And seriously though, if you don't believe me, like, taking a diagnostic test gives you a ton of information, right? Like, for example, if you're not able to solve any of the problems and you're barely able to understand the solutions, then that probably means that you need to learn some of the basic concepts, right? If you're not able to solve a lot, but you're able to understand the solutions, that probably means you know how, like, math works, right? You know some of the basic concepts, but you have to actually apply the problem-solving skills and get better at that. If you take the diagnostic test and there's, like, a specific subject that you're getting wrong, like, I used to get algebra problems the wrong every single time. I hated, like, polynomials and that kind of stuff, so... I had to study a lot of algebra <laughs> without even a sentence. What I'm trying to say is that if there's a specific subject you're struggling on, you can always just look at that specific textbook and work on problems from that area to get better. And then if on the diagnostic test you're struggling with 20 to 25 on the AMC 10, then you know that maybe you have to start with the intermediate books and that kind of stuff. Taking a diagnostic test gives you a ton of information to get you started, and that is why I put it as the first step. Okay, step number two, decide what to study. Now, this is a pretty broad <laughs> step, right? Not concrete at all. But the reason why I say that is because there's so much stuff to do, like so much things you could study and probably should study other than doing problems. Like you don't want to be constantly taking mock tests and not being able to solve anything and just skimming over for, like 500 solutions and not learning anything, right? Like that's pretty useless. That's why you need to decide what you need to study first before you just jump into problems and try to grind your way to victory. That's not how it works. So going back to the diagnostic test, if you got like lower than 100, you should probably be working on the introductory AOPS textbooks, right? So just to list a couple resources, obviously there's textbooks. I think the courses are really good if you're not like a kind of self-motivated studier. I was not a self-motivated studier in 6th and 7th, dude. My mom literally had to force me to do the problems. I did not pay any attention in class, but taking the classes forces you, forces you to be on deadline, right? Like I had to learn LaTeX, I had to solve like X number of problems every week for homework. The classes are really, really helpful, but yes, I understand they're really expensive, so... If you can't, you should probably just like work through the textbooks and buy a couple that you could afford. If you had to decide between the textbooks, I would definitely take Intro to Algebra and Volume 1. Like Volume 1 is kind of hard if you're like a beginner, but Intro to Algebra should get you your problem solving skills to the right level. Then you can start doing practice problems and getting like the concepts there. And then Volume 1 could just build from that. <laughs> but that being said, if you can't afford it, like getting all the textbooks is really helpful. I have like all the textbooks. They're super, super useful. I I've, I've gone back to them like hundreds of times. So... I definitely would recommend buying all of them. Other good resources if you're in this introductory stage is Alchemist. They don't really have any advanced problems, but if you're starting out, it's really good. It gives you a lot of practice, and it's so satisfying, dude. Once you get the blue bar in Alchemist topics, it's amazing. Other things that you could use, AMC 8s, right? AMC 8s, like, I know I said don't do mock tests, right? But AMC 8s, like, the problems aren't, like, super, super hard to find, right? You, 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 it's harder to find harder problems, but AMC 8s, the problems are a little bit easier. They're 
uh, probably good for your skill level. Like what I like to do is I used to like go through AMCA problems if I'm not able to solve it, I would go through the solutions and if I didn't know a, like a concept in it, I would search that up and like read through the wiki. Like Wolfram Alpha has a lot of wikis on this kind of stuff and then just doing problems that I could find online. The good thing about that is like a lot of these concepts are used in a ton of different problems in different ways. So if you just like look through the concepts and study them outside, right, you get like a lot of them down and you're able to solve a lot more. And also like if you're at that level, you can always use Khan Academy because Khan Academy is good for low level stuff. It, it, once you get to like Amy and above, Khan Academy isn't good enough. But if you're just learning basic concepts, Khan Academy works too. It's a very free option. So now if you're getting over a hundred on your mock test, then you're probably ready for intermediate. I, I personally would recommend like staying on introductory books as long as the chat like problems are interesting to you. But if you think you're ready, then yes, I would go to the intermediate books and start with volume two. Basically the way I like to think of it is volume one and like the introductory books are really good for getting you to Amy, right? But once you make Amy and you're trying to do really well on Amy, then you want to start doing volume two and the intermediate books. Like when I was grinding for JMO, I like exclusively used volume two, right? I basically went through the entire book and whenever there was like a chapter that I was just dying on the challenge problems, I would go to like the intermediate book for that specific topic and just like go through that chapter there and learn all the stuff. And of course this goes without saying, but if there's a specific topic that you're struggling with, I would focus on that, right? Don't just like go through volume one, even if you're like really good at algebra and geometry, right? You might probably want to focus on combinatorics and number theory. Like a good way to think of this is like, if there's one specific subject that you're like, I hate geometry. <laughs> Why does everyone hate geometry? I love geometry. Geometry is beautiful. I'm, I'm gonna get so flamed in the comments for saying that, but seriously though, like if there's one thing that you really, really hate, that's probably what you should be studying. <laughs> Not gonna lie. I know, I know it sounds mean, but come on, you gotta do it, okay? Amy doesn't care about your feelings. All right, so now that you've basically come up with like what you want to study, right? Like which book you want to study, which subject you want to study, like which content you're going to like go through to study, then you should actually start studying them, okay? It's kind of, kind of self-explanatory, but you know, I gotta say it. But on a serious note, like how you study actually matters, right? Like if you're like, I'm going to study the introduction to number theory book and then you just don't touch it for a month and you go back one day, you like look at it for a little bit and then you just give up again. It doesn't help, right? It's so useless. So basically the way I like to do it is I like to set daily goals of like how many chapters, right? Not, not time-based because then you can just like screw around for like the whole time and just say, oh, I was studying totally. I totally wouldn't like, you know, staring at PewDiePie's face for like five hours. <laughs> huh? But actually setting chapter goals forces you to do it and it also like incentivizes you to do it quickly, right? Because if you're able to like do it more efficiently, then you have more time to relax after, right? And another reason why you want to have daily goals is because cramming just doesn't work, right? Like if you forget to like study for like a whole month before the AMC and then just the day before you just grind like a bunch of problems, it's not going to help. Okay, maybe marginally, but it's not going to like be good enough. There's basically no memorization for Amy and JMO, right? Like if you make Amy and JMO, you're probably really good at problem solving skills. You probably don't have like a bunch of random facts crammed in your brain from the night before. So because it's pure problem solving, you really need to start early and you really need to have a consistent schedule. Otherwise it's just not going to work. Okay, number four. Now this is like one that I didn't include in my other video, but it's pretty important. I think join a math club, okay? Because when you're working with other people, you're way more motivated to actually do stuff. Like in 6th and 7th grade, I was kind of motivated. A lot of my friends did math. They were, they were not like that motivated either though. So I, I kind of like did it a little bit. I wasn't really into it though. But then in 8th grade, when I actually started like getting more involved in the math club, I was like at the top level. I was like working with some of the more top guys there. Then I actually started improving really, really fast, right? Because when you're surrounded by people who are also interested in it, then you actually get a lot better. And I remember we used to wake up at like 7 a.m. every single day, like during winter break, just to practice math counts problems. That was crazy. And the only reason I did that is because of a part of the math club. So either you could do it at your school, right? That's one option. Or you could obviously do it at like another organization that's nearby. In the Bay Area, there's like a ton of them. There's like random math, there's Euler Circle, there's Stanford Math Circle. There's probably a ton more that I don't even know about, but those are the ones that I've heard about. They're kind of expensive though, so ideally do it at your school if you can. All right, so now that you've taken the diagnostic test, you're studying on your own, you've even gone to like these math clubs and stuff, now you actually gotta go to a math summer program, okay? You can't chillax in the summer. Summer is not for chillaxing. Who told you that? Who told you that? Who told you that? Real deal is what you do for fun, okay? That's the three hours of league you gotta play every day. Anyone who thinks the summer is for relaxing is a normal person, <laughs> just not a math nerd. <laughs> Bruh, but come on, if you're watching this video, you're probably a math nerd, so summer is for grinding, okay? I honestly think that my math skills improved the most during the summer of 7th grade when I went to Awesome Math UT Dallas. That was like my favorite summer program ever. I took Combo 1 and Geo 1, right? And I improved so heckin' much. I learned so much stuff there. So if there's like one summer program I would recommend, I definitely would recommend Awesome Math. I think the non-residential ones, like the commuter ones, are not as good, but 
it's still really, really good. All the teachers are amazing, and the problems that they give are really good too. Now, the reason why you want to do math summer programs instead of just like doing stuff on your own is because it actually forces you to be productive, it forces you to work with other people, and they have teachers, right? And those teachers are really good, so I really think you should do a math summer program if you have the opportunity to. Because people tend to forget the time exists in summer for some reason. They're just like, oh, I don't know how to do anything for summer. And then the school year comes, AMC 10 comes, and they're like, oh, shoot, I did not do anything in summer. What, what was I doing? I will admit, I, I, I am guilty of that, too. Now, honestly, like, ones that are specifically focused at competition math are kind of rare. The only other one that I know really is IDM math. There's probably something else, but... Oh, and Everade, right? Everade is a new one, but... There, there are really not that many that are specifically focused at competition math. There are programs like Ross and Canada USA Math Camp and Promise. They're really good, right? I, I really wanted to go to Canada USA Math Camp because some of the concepts they teach are really, really cool, but they're just not like for Amy or JMO, that kind of stuff. I would only attend if you want to get better at math, not necessarily Amy math. Okay, now that you got your summer program in the bag, you finally got to start taking practice tests. Now, this is a very important step, okay, because... It ensures that you can manage your time and hopefully not make sillies, which <laughs> this definitely did not help for me, but, you know, <laughs> it might help you not make sillies. I've told the story like a hundred times and I will keep telling it. I literally wrote 121 plus 1 equals 123 on my paper. And I literally got so close to not making JMO because I missed that question. I was so triggered, holy moly. Like the day of the test, I was so sad because I was like 100% sure I did not make JMO after making that stupid mistake. I literally can't even forget about it because I literally wrote it, wrote it on the paper. It was crazy. Yeah, that's why you don't make sillies, okay? <laughs> Bro, I don't, I don't even know how to prevent sillies. I'm sorry, guys. I, I really can't help you guys there. But I think I think pra taking practice tests is, like, the best way to try to try to prevent it. Also, if you guys don't know how important time management is as well, right? Like, time management can completely destroy your ability to show how good you are on the test, right? Like, this year on the Amy, I literally spent 1.5 hours on the Geo problem. And I was like, I should know how to solve this because I like Geo. <laughs> and I literally spent 1.5 hours and I still got it wrong after, like, oh my god. And then after the contest, of course, I just look at it and I solve it in two minutes. Come on, man. Why, why, why can't you do that in the contest? It's so sad. But anyways, the point is, make sure to take at least like five mock timed practice tests before the actual exam. And ideally, you should use the more newer ones because those are obviously going to be a better like indication of the difficulty of the new test, right? But you should also probably take a lot more mock exams throughout the year just to see where you are. Make sure you time them just to like, make sure you see whether you need to improve your time management skills. And you could probably use the older ones like when you're studying throughout the year. Now for Amy, it's kind of impractical to like, t like time a three hour exam. So I wouldn't recommend doing too many of those. It honestly doesn't really help that much because time management isn't as important, unless you're me, of course, that was so sad. But I honestly think it's not really worth doing that many mock Amy's until the actual, like, week of the test or something. Alright, and now finally, after practicing for so long, you are finally ready to take the test. Let's go! So here are just a couple tips, like, a lot of people disagree with me on this kind of stuff. Some people say you should probably do, like, math the day before just to get your brain in the mood, but... In my opinion, the most important thing is get your good sleep the day before, right? I don't know how applicable this is for everybody, but for me, if I get a bad day of sleep, I just can't do anything the next day. Also, eat a good snack, it actually helps. Like, if you could eat during the contest, like, what, one guy in my school literally brings a chocolate bar every time, and he got roasted one time by the librarian was like, Hey, no eating food here! But, <laughs> he still did well, okay? Also, don't drink too much water during the exam, because I literally brought a water bottle <laughs> during ninth grade, and I had to pee the entire time, and I did not want to get up because I thought it would be like cheating or something, so I just kept it in for three whole hours and I could not think straight for the whole thing. It was so bad. Honestly, other than preparing for the test, I don't really have that many tips or tricks for during the test, but like for time management, I did a really, really detailed breakdown in my previous video, but I think that was overly complicated, so here's the like simple breakdown for you guys. If you guys are just trying to qualify for Amy, you should solve the first 15 problems in the first 45 minutes, right? And then you only need to solve like two or three more problems in order to qualify for Amy. You probably could get away with even less now that the cutoff is just going down and down and down. Dude, back when I had to get like do it, the cutoff was always above like 110 usually. Now they're like letting in more kids and the cutoff is just going down and down and down. But that is okay, okay? Better for you guys. I'm, I'm just old, okay? And then if you want to qualify for JMO, you should basically solve the first 15 problems in 25 minutes, right? solve the next five in 20 minutes, and then have like 30 minutes to solve the last five, right? Because usually the last five are what distinguish the Amy qualifier from the AMO qual like JMO qualifier. Basically, in order to qualify for JMO, you probably need like around 22 questions correct, in, like around a 130 to actually have a chance at qualifying for JMO. Another thing to mention for JMO is that you should probably not spend too much time checking your answers because like the amount of time you spend checking your answers could be used to solve a problem that will distinguish you from the next guy. Okay, and that is all I got to say for taking the test. After the test, make sure to relax, okay? That is the last step of this whole process. 
you, you did your best, okay? You can't change how you did on the test, right? People might have done better than you. It's okay. That's how life is. There's always going to be a bigger fish in the sea. All you got to do is learn from it and decide what you want to work on next, okay? <laughs> Dude, that, that's going to be the cheesiest thing I've ever said on this channel. And I've said some cheesy stuff. But seriously though, like, that's, that's my life philosophy, right? There are always going to be better people in the world. You just, you just got to do your best, okay? <laughs> if that's not a motivational speech, I don't know what is. But other than that, that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. I really appreciate it. If you guys have any other suggestions, let me know down in the comments. But that's all I got. So, thank you guys for watching again, and I will see you next time.